Hey everybody, Chris here from Tiny Home Tours. I want to thank everybody that signed up for the course. The course is now 30% off and it will remain at 30% off up until the launch of the course December 4th. We still have plenty of bonuses, so if you're interested in living the tiny home lifestyle and the digital nomad lifestyle, be sure to click the link down below. Enjoy today's video. Have a great day. I'm Shyla. And I'm Brad. This is Sophia. And this is Cannoli. And this is our tiny home. We bought a Ram ProMaster 2500 series, the 159 inch wheelbase, and we've been on the road for a little less than a year. We're going to start with our Suburban Gas Range. Uh, we decided to go with this because I'm a professional baker and this happens to fit a Dutch oven, which is what I bake bread in. So it's got three burners. Like I said, it's propane. It's kind of a mess, but it will fit a loaf of bread. And so next we have our spice racks. These are inset into the walls. And so there's a little bit of insulation behind them, but it's a good about two and a half inches. Uh, we can fit all of our spices up here and they work perfectly. We don't need much more than that. So next we have this magnetic knife rack. It was a gift. Uh, I am from the kitchen. I am a professional baker and pastry chef. So I need to have my tools and this is perfect because they don't slide around while we're jostling down the street. And below the stove, we have this cabinet, which is extra storage for all my cast irons, our laundry stuff. And then back there, we also have three five pound propane tanks, which feeds our stove and will last us about three months. So we purchased this Dometic uh, CRX 110 fridge, fridge freezer combo. Uh, it's beautiful. It's got 3.8 cubic feet of space, which is plenty for us. Uh, we can pack that thing full and be out on the road for probably about three weeks or so without stopping for food. And it's beautiful. Love it. So we repurposed some sewing machine cabinet drawers and it's the only size that would fit so they're pretty small but we keep all of our utensils and then we have kind of a junk drawer and we have our personal care drawers. We each get one. So that's what all these are. So down here we have a five kilowatt Chinese diesel heater. The thing works spectacularly. It runs off of diesel, which we have a small diesel tank in the back behind our water tank, but it blows out. It blows onto the little dog room, which is down here and just fills the space. And the thing works absolutely wonderful. So right here is where we keep all of our gray tank, all of our personal care items, trash, uh, fire extinguisher back there, all the plumbing for the faucet. And then back here behind the gray tank, we also have the SureFlow water pump. So we chose a 15 by 15 inch sink. It's I think nine inches deep. It's perfect size for to wash the dogs, to wash dishes, whatever we need. Uh, we have this little extendable hose, a uh, soap dispenser. We have a 32 gallon water tank, fresh water tank in the back behind the bed or beneath the bed. And then we also have a seven gallon gray tank, which this drains into. We decided to go with butcher block countertops because it was the only thing we could find within budget. And also this gives me a perfect workspace for all my bread, bread making and meal prep. We also finished it with a natural sealant. That way we can actually work directly on it as a cutting board and you won't get any sort of terrible stuff in your food. We also chose this backsplash, it's just the peel and stick tile. Uh, Shyla actually found this online and ordered it and installed it herself and it looks fantastic. It gives the illusion of a real backsplash without doing real tile. What inspired us to do van life was we both were in this spot in our lives where we were just looking for a change and the next big thing and we kind of fell into this YouTube rabbit hole of just unique living situations and we realized van life would be a perfect opportunity for us to full-time travel and check out the rest of the world. It took us a year to convert this thing uh, but we also traveled on our weekends and really put the traveling first. Uh, we moved in when it was just a bed platform and sub walls and that was it. Um, we had no prior experience building so this was all new to us but I think it came out really nice. Mm -hmm. So we bought the van, it's a 2019, we bought it in 2020 for 35000 
and I think we have about 15 to 20 grand into it. So we're looking somewhere around 55 grand that we have in, into this conversion. How we paid for the build out of the van is while we built out the van, we also worked. So we took a year to work, save up money so we could fund the build of the van. And now that the van is finished, I work remotely. And so that's how we fund all of our travels. We also lived in the van as we built it out so that all of our monthly expenses like rent and water, utilities, all that stuff could be funneled into this project instead. Mm -hmm. So while it was difficult to start, <laughs> uh, we wouldn't change it because yeah. it really afforded us to do the high-end finishes that we wanted to do. And so for the lighting we decided to go with these beautiful 12 volt puck lights. They're about half an inch thick so they fit perfectly with the ceiling that we decided to go with. Uh, we have two different zones. We have eight up here on the main ceiling and then we also have four down here underneath the cabinetry. Uh, they are both on dimmer switches which is very nice for mood setting and they light, the, they light our rig up very well. So at night when we're parked in a parking lot or out in the woods or wherever, we truly feel like we're at home. So for the ceiling, we decided to go with a super thin 1 8 inch underlayment. That way I have enough clearance because I'm pretty tall. Uh, and then we found this really nice embossed wallpaper that my dad helped us put up. So shout out dad. Uh, behind that we have Havelock wool, a pretty good amount. And that's what we used for the entire van and it works very well. Uh, we don't have any sort of issues with it and it keeps it very four seasons. So right here we have kind of our command central. Uh, we have our inverter remote control which turns our 2000 watt inverter on and off uh, so that we may use our 110 outlets which we have the two, two 110s and then two USBs and we have one here and we also have one in the kitchen. Um, so like I said that's, that's what controls the 110 outlets. Uh, we that all runs off of two 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries rely ons good quality love it love our whole system uh, we have our dimmer switch for the lights and like i said the 110 and this is our controller for our max air fans so we have two uh, we decided to put two in because of running bread in the oven it gets really hot in here so we wanted the really good cycle of air and having two in here is superb we we wouldn't choose anything different so our upper cabinets right here go along the whole length of the van we did that for ample storage they all have latches on them so they don't open while we're driving we keep all of our dishes and the rest of our spices in this one and then we also have this is our pantry right here all of our food and then these back two are brad's clothing cabinets and then the far back one is mine for my clothes. We purposely did not put cabinets on this side of the van just because we wanted to make sure when we're in bed it doesn't feel very closed off and plus this open shelf is really nice to set our phones or any drinks on. For our bed we actually decided to go with a fixed bed. Prior to van life we bought a Tempur-Pedic bed and so we did not want to part ways with it when we moved into the van so we actually built the van around the bed. Bed. That was our first decision of our layout. So this is a queen size Tempur-Pedic bed and it fits perfectly in this space. We absolutely love it and could not live without the Tempur-Pedic. For underneath the bed on the back side is our garage space where we have ample storage and on the front side right here this is our composting toilet with our lagoon mount for our table right here mounted on the front and on this side right here we have a slide out bench that opens up for more storage. This is our composting toilet right here. It is on 500 pound drawer slides. There's a latch on this side to lock it in place and unlock it. So it comes out. It does have a fan inside to circulate the air that runs off our 12 volt system. And you just remove the top, which has little dowels so it holds in place. We decided to make our own composting toilet just to see if it would work out and it works perfectly. Um, there is the urine diverter and then which goes into a tank and then we have all of our composting in this bucket right here. A few things that were a bit difficult while moving into the van were no water, no toilet, 
no fridge, no oven, really not a kitchen because we moved into it when it was empty. The only thing in the van aside from our suitcases was the bed behind us. We didn't have electricity or any lights, so there was definitely an adjustment period, but I will say it really made us appreciate the amenities as we added them into the van. So neither of us really had any sort of construction experience. Um, I am a professional pastry chef and baker by trade, and Shyla is a professional makeup artist, so we just had to learn it on the fly, but I'd say it turned out pretty well. Yeah, a lot of research, a lot of searching on YouTube. Yep. The hardest part for us of the build-out process was, I'd say, the electrical. Definitely the electrical. Uh, neither of us had experience in that before, so it was all a learning curve. We had some help in the beginning, and uh, pretty much we just took it over and realized that we need to learn this. So mm -hmm. that's what we did, is we learned it and uh, wired the whole thing up ourselves, and now we know how to fix it if something ever breaks. But it's also given us a lot of problems yes and now we fully know the system yes and its capabilities i'd say our relationship has strengthened quite a bit since moving into the van yes. uh, we were solid before this but this really pushes you into a tighter space and you just you're always around the other yeah. person and sometimes that might not be good <laughs> but if you're solid it's not too bad you, i enjoy it yeah you definitely learn a lot about each other but i think I, we wouldn't have it any other way Mm -hmm. This right here is our little dinette area because we have our lagoon mount um, mounted right here. Underneath our bench we have a bedroom for our dogs with their bed and their toys. This basket right here is what houses all of their food, toys, leashes, and it just slides right back here when we're done. So for the cabin area, we mainly kept it stock. Up here, we keep a lot of items, such as our laptops, all of our board games, and then our lagoon mount is actually up here for our table. We also added a curtain on slides just for privacy and for um, to keep the heat and cool out. Right here behind the driver's seat is where we actually keep our table. It fits perfectly in this spot. And right below it is where we have our shoe cubbies. This is our lovely table here. Brad's dad made it for us and we are so thankful. So thank you, Brett, for making it for us. This is awesome. It's on a lagoon mound and it swivels. So it's nice because if we want to extend the counter space in our kitchen, we can turn it this way um, and it really opens everything up. Or we can turn it this way if we wanted it to and it just slides kind of anywhere you need it. This is the bench that fits underneath the bed. It has a lot of storage in it and it also doubles as extra seating. All right, so for the top of the van, we've got a couple different things up there. We'll start with this motion light right here. Uh, we were living in Portland downtown uh, during all the social unrest of 2020. And so we had a lot of people trying to get into our van for some reason. Um, Shiloh would be sleeping in here by herself overnight. So we installed this motion light and it kind of deterred people. It also kind of made some other people interested in the van. Uh, aside from that, we mounted our solar panel with Unistrut and Superstrut. Uh, the solar panel is 360 watt Solaria. It's actually designed for inclement weather like Portland where it's kind of cloudy. So even in the winter time when we had a, about an inch of ice on the solar panel, we were still getting solar. So that was really nice. And we absolutely love that solar panel. It charges our banks very fast. Uh, other than that, we also have the WeBoost up there. Uh, Shiloh works remotely, so she needs that to work in the van with the jetpack. And uh, other than that, we have two Max Air fans, like I mentioned earlier, for cycling the air through the van really well. All right, so this is our garage space, all our extra storage. Uh, we pretty much keep our tools, our water tank system. Uh, we have a little collapsible shower that we have. We have uh, our diesel tank for our Chinese diesel heater. We have a 32 gallon water tank just behind that. And then over on this side, we have our 2000 watt Kotec inverter, uh, solar charge controller. And then this is our WeBoost cellular booster. And then our battery bank is just behind all this stuff.
the piece of advice I would give somebody that was interested in doing van life or a build out would be don't live in it when you start the van build. I would definitely wait until you have at least electricity and maybe a fridge uh, before you move into it. <laughs> it's fun to do once, yeah. but I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Plans for the future are, as of right now, just traveling. We really would love to travel the US. We would love to travel Canada, possibly, even overseas, eventually. Maybe even South America, yeah. that'd be really cool. Yeah, we don't have a solid plan in place yet, but that's why we chose van life, is so we can just go with the flow, and you know, we have the next few months kind of planned out, but as far as that, everything's kind of up in the air, and that's what we love about it. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for taking a tour of our tiny home. You can follow us on Instagram and YouTube under Trippin' with Brad and Shyla. And all of the links to everything will be below.